Alex, you're muted. There we go. Um, well, good evening. My name is Alex Ayala or Alejandra, and I am the project manager for the WJ Bose uh, reconstruction project. Um, this project is the WJ Bose Road is is the dividing line between Council District Number Two and Council District Number Seven. So this this does involve uh, two council districts within the city of Fort Worth. Um, I will be managing this project uh, from from now until until we close it out. And I want to thank all of you for joining us this evening. And just to let you know, our agenda is I'm going to introduce the project team. I'm going to explain my our project manager role, give you an overview of, of the project map, and then we're going to discuss the scope of the project, the schedule and budget, contact information, and then we'll open it up for questions and answers at the end of the meeting. So the project team is made up of myself. I'm Alex um, and I'm the project manager and I report to our, our program manager who is who is Raul Lopez. He's also on this call as well. The city has partnered with Graham Associates to design this project and our two of our engineers are Mark Burkhardt and Joe Perkins. So my role as a transportation project manager, I'm the professional responsible for resource coordination, procuring and managing the contracts and services for the delivery of this project, whose limits and scope are predefined by the transportation planners. Um, our consultant project manager role is their professionals and they're responsible for the design, coordination of the resources needed for the survey, right of way acquisition, utility relocations, permit submittals, bidding, and construction management, and ensuring the elements of the predefined scope are included in the final design. Approximately 1.1 miles of WJ Bose will be reconstructed between Boat Club Road on the west and Elkin School Road on the east. The scope of the project includes widening between Boat Club Road to Elkin School Road. Um, we're going to modify the, the traffic sim, signal at Boat Club Road. Uh, we're going to do some studies to determine if a traffic signal is needed at Bowman Roberts Road, which includes analysis to determine the best design for this intersection. This road is going to become a four lane divided roadway. We're going to have 10 full 10 foot multi use trails on the north side of the road. And we're going to try to accommodate that that 10 foot wide trail on the south side. But there are going to be some areas where the sidewalks have been reduced between 5 to 7 feet in order to reduce the impacts to pub, uh, private property. There's also drainage improvements, which includes the elimination of the roadside dishes that we currently see out there. We're also going to do some channel and culvert improvements north and east of Elkin School Road. We're also going to include street lights into this design. The design sections reduce are being reduced in certain areas in order to minimize the impact to home, to trees, and to parking areas. We're also going to be doing water and sewer um, relocations on this project as well. So, as you all know, those who drive this road, um, this road has, has been around forever. It used to be part of Tarrant County. And it is a currently a two lane uh, country road with side road ditches. Um, the first picture there is, is looking west at Bull Club Road to, into the Eagle Ranch area. As we expand this uh, intersection from a two lane to a four lane, we will be doing redoing the signal as well. We have a lot of overhead power lines near Boat Club Road. We also have underground natural gas pipelines and, and franchise utilities that we will be re having to relocate uh, as part of this project. Here's some more pictures of the current conditions of the roadway. Um, 
there are areas where you see um, quite a bit of, of space between the existing buildings and the current roadway section. Those are areas where as development came through the city, the city was able to get a right of way dedicated by these particular developers. Um, especially you will see that near the, the storage warehouse on the west side of, of the project and near West Crest Way, um, where you could see the widened section in the middle picture. There was a temporary roundabout that was recently constructed at the intersection of W.J. Bowes and Bowman Roberts to alleviate the congestion at the intersection. The city plans to conduct a study to determine if the roundabout will need to be expanded or if we need to change it to a traffic signal. And we'll have to go out there and our Graham associates will be conducting that study to design to determine which is the best best solution in order to maximize the capacity of at that intersection and get a traffic moving. Currently, the existing side road ditches will be eliminated. This, uh, this street will become a curb and gutter section, which means all the all the storm drain will be going underground. And I'm going to get into a little bit. Uh, this is just our, this is a schematic design. This is just a very preliminary uh, planning uh, schematic that we're using in order to determine what's going to be the best way to design this roadway. Uh, it will be four lanes. There'll be two lanes going westbound and two lanes going eastbound. The medians will vary in size. It's just going to depend on the width will depend on how where they are and how we can we can minimize the impact to, to private property that has, you know, developed along this corridor in the last, you know, 20, 30 years. And this is just more of that schematic design as as you go toward the intersection of Bowman Roberts. And I just wanted to reiterate that we will be looking at figuring out whether we're going to keep this roundabout or we're going to put in a uh, signalized intersection. And start starting right around Seth Barwise Street going eastbound. This is where we have um, a lot of private properties that are going to be impacted by this roadway widening. Um, the developments that occurred on the north side of the street to, uh, have dedicated right away when they came in for permitting through the city. And on the south side of the street, we have uh, the Temple Baptist Church and other private properties that are going to require right away acquisition. And, and in these areas is, is that we're looking into to really minimizing that median in order to, to reduce the amount of right away take along the frontage of, of these homes. As we continue eastbound, uh, the project ends uh, a little bit east of Elkins School Road. We are going to do improvements to the current uh, culvert that's at Marine Creek Tributary. Th that culvert is very undersized and it overtops when we get significant rainstorm events. So that culvert will be upsized in order to minimize um, the overtopping during certain rainfall events. The typical section for this roadway was supposed to have been 110 feet, but we are going to get a variance to try to reduce it at, to 90 feet in some areas in order to, to minimize the impact to those private properties. As we go over to, toward the east side of the project, uh, that's where we plan to, to do some, some right away acquisition and minimize that to about 74 feet to to 70 feet in order to to reduce that those median widths and be able to accommodate and get this roadway um, as far away as we can from from people's property.
So the schedule, um, we're going to start right away acquisition this summer. Between uh, now, uh, between summer of 2022 and summer of 2023, it takes approximately about a year to get uh, right away. Um, first, this this coming month in June and July, uh, we get, we got to get survey started. So, in order for us to really get into into the design of this roadway project, we have to get that accomplished. Uh, we have a substantial completion of of the design next summer by 2023. Once we obtain right away, it's going to take about another year to do utility relocations. As many of you know that are live in this area, this is this used to be a Tarrant County road, and so um, there's a lot of utilities that need to be that need to be relocated uh, above and, and below the ground. And so, once we we get the right away, we'll be able to 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 do start relocating those. Uh, we plan to start construction sometime in the fall of 2024. Uh, th these dates are very tentative uh, as we progress in the design and figure out the complexities of this project. Um, we will we'll be able to give you a more finite dates, but but for now, this this is pretty much the the estimated. The, the for the construction to start in the fall of 2024 and it's going to be anywhere between 18 to 24 month projects so we're going to assume we're going to be completed around the fall of 2026 um we do have a uh, project funding sources we had a tarrant county bond el election in november 2021 which the county is 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 paying for some of some of the this money some of the monies are coming from Tarrant County as well as from the Fort Worth 2022 bond program that uh, the, the uh, residents of Fort Worth uh, voted on in May of 2022. The construction cost for this project is about $30 million. Um, here's my information, um, I'm on the left. And there's my phone number and my email address. Uh, feel free to call me or email me if you have any questions. And we all, I also put uh, Raj Gupta. He's our traffic management. He's one of our traffic engineers for the city. And that's his information there in case you have any questions about traffic. And with that, um, that's all the information I have on the project. I'll open it up to, to questions. Alex, this is Council Member Flores. I'm on the call. Uh, I wasn't able. I'm good. I wasn't able to get on the uh, uh, the meeting link for some reason. But uh, in case I missed it, I apologize. But is there any um, is there any uh, plan? I guess when it comes to detours due to construction that folks should know about. At this point in time, we haven't quite yet gone through those uh, exercises yet. I think as we get into more of the design, we'll be able to to make those determinations about detours. Okay. All I, uh, my request being, once we know what those particulars are, uh, if they can somehow be posted on the city webpage to let uh, let people know what to expect, how to uh, make adjustments to. Uh, their travel schedules or meeting schedules if necessary. Absolutely. We Thank can you. post those up to the to the project website. Great. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. Have you anticipated burying burying any of the power lines where the construction is going to be so they wouldn't be seen anymore? No, those are going to stay overhead and, and visible. Um, the, the cost to to bury those power lines is pretty significant. And um, that's why we we're going to just relocate them to the to the edges of the roadway. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. So, Alex, we have a. Hi, Alex. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, sir. Sorry. Oh, no worries. Th this is Billy with Eagle Mount Saginaw School District. And so my question is, have y'all determined how you're going to phase this road as far as maybe building the north and building the south? Or has that been discussed or, or determined? Well, we plan to keep the current lanes open. One of the, the 
pros about this project is that we currently have two functioning um, lanes going west and east. So the plan is to construct uh, the, the the new pavement first and then swap traffic over and construct okay. the, the the north side of the street where, where the existing lanes are. Okay. And and typically, um, when I start projects, um, I usually have a list of stakeholders, which usually includes the, I know there's quite a bit of elementary schools out here, middle school, and now also Boswell High School to the north. And I also uh, have, I do communications with them. I also do communications with the, with the bus, the bus folks, to let them know when we plan to, to change a route, uh, uh, it, it do anything on this roadway that may impact their route and timing in the mornings. And usually I send those out. Uh, I try to do at least two weeks ahead of time. So they're, it, they, they stay, you know, uh, in the know of what we're doing with this road, because I know school traffic can be, can be hectic during, during construction. Yes, so thank you very much on that. Obviously that the consideration is, is very appreciative. And then just so I, confirm what you said it's it's going to be a complete four lane road with center turn lanes yes we'll have a median and and some of those mediums will have turn lanes okay very good but you so you would have two four lanes each side with a center turn lane and yes. the median okay yeah. but it's just it's just that some of those some of the width of that road is going to be narrow if you're on the east side of uh, Innisbrook. Yes. Okay. I think it was. Um, let me go back. Uh, Alex, I think there is a little confusion with uh, semantics here. There's not going to be a center lane. There's going to be a center medium, but there's not going to be a two-way uh, left turn lane. If that's what the gentleman is asking. There's going to be a solid median, not a two way uh, left turn lane. And there will be left turn lanes at those medians at the, at the median intersection breaks, at the yeah. median breaks. Correct. Okay. But no, no dedicated turn lane. Not yeah. a continuous 1. No. Okay. There'll be a medium with, with, with left turn lanes cut into it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. This is our yeah. uh, I had a question on the median in front of Billingham. WJ Boas, is that set in stone? That's going to be there. Billingham, let me get to that. It's on, on the on the screen right now. That right there. Right there. Over on the left hand side. We're we're working through details on those. Um, I think as we progress more into the design of this project, we'll we'll be able to make determinations of of where we're going to have these medians. Right now, because of Bob Hanger, we're anticipating having one there. I was going to to piggyback on that gentleman's question. Bob Hanger has had quite a few wrecks. People will drive through Bob Hanger, breeze right through WJ Boaz, and we've had three different cars slam through a brick wall right there at that intersection. Um, and then other wrecks just a little bit down the road. And I was wondering, are traffic patterns and wrecks and incidents going to be reviewed? when designing the road or things like that? Absolutely. We take, uh, we, we follow all of the guidelines for a safe roadway design. So we're going to be able to, we have, we work closely as well. It, it's not just my department, TPW, but I work with our traffic management folks to make, make sure that we're following all the guidelines and all the rules. Um, so when we do these peer review meetings, we look at all that. The traffic patterns, how many wrecks, where they are, and the, yes. that sort of thing. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate it. We Thank also, you. when we do warrant study for for traffic signals, that's that's one of the criteria, okay. is for our engineers to obtain um, the 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 wreck reports, the incident reports at at these intersections. Ah. Uh, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, Alex, there's a few questions in the uh, chat. Um, now I'm going to start going down them. Is there any sure. intent to widen the road to Old Decatur Road? And I'll answer that one. Now. At this time, that is not funded. That section is not funded. The only section that 
was found that was um, this section that we're discussing today. Uh, that section is identified for future improvements, but it's not funded at this time. And the next question is, um, why is the construction stopping on Elkins, Elkins School Road? It's kind of the same question, yeah. Uh, it is not funded yet, going all the way to Aldicator. <laughs> question is, will Cromwell Marine Creek and Bellabas will be under construction at the same time? And I'll take this one as well, Alex. And I, I'm sorry, I'm Raul Lopez. I'm the engineering manager that oversees the design and construction. All of, of all of the thoroughfares in Fort Worth and Alex is in my team. Um, I have a little more knowledge of, you know, kind of a holistic knowledge of uh, the arterials and what the plans are. So that's why I'm answering some of the questions. Um, we we try to offset the construction, offset the construction so that not all the thoroughfares in construction at the same time. The challenge that we have is that we have to, we have five years to deliver all of this products that we have started right about the same time. So they end up starting construction right around the same time. So we, we'll try to offset them and, and work, you know, with one another lo logistically to avoid, you know, um, having all of them, having at least, you know, routes to, to alleviate traffic while some of them are in the construction. But the challenge is we have to finish all of these projects within a year, or within five years, I'm sorry. Terrible. Next question is, are we, are we redoing the roundabout we already spent money on? Uh, that roundabout at Bowman Roberts is, was meant to be temporary, sort of a, a quick solution for the, um, the traffic um, conditions at, at the time, but it's been reevaluated whether a roundabout, whether it can be expanded or if the traffic signal is more efficient once the road is uh, widened to four lanes. Right now it's only two lanes. So um, that's gonna be taken into account. Any sidewalks in the plan? Yes, there are sidewalks um, along the entire corridor. When we do um, improvements uh, to the thoroughfares, sidewalks are always included. Um, we have a, what we call a complete streets policy and that is meant to provide mobility for cars, pedestrians, and bicycles, and other means of transportation, transit as well. If the plan stays as it is generally designed, where is the closest U-turn for people coming out of Bellingham? Alex, can you bring the plan, the screen back there? They'll be able to U-turn at Bob Hanger if you're coming out of Billingham. That would be the median opening. Which end of the road will you be starting at? We that's we haven't determined that yet. We're at the very early stage of the project. So this is the very first public meeting that we have. And we will have more meetings as we progress the design. And once we have a contractor under contract, then we'll have what we call a pre-construction meeting and we'll provide that information, which which side we're gonna start and how we're gonna progress through the construction. Excuse me, Rule. Yes. So the question on those sidewalks, will there be sidewalks on the north and south side of the road? Correct. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Sure. So that's all of the questions that I have in the chat. Uh, at this point, I think we'll give it a few minutes. Good. If anybody either on the phone wants to add another additional question, or if anybody comes up with other questions, um, I think we have one more question. How will cars going east on Bose get into Bellingham? So, so they'll they'll have to either go in. There's two entrances to that subdivision. There's one at Innisbrook Lane, which has a median opening, and then there's Bellingham Road. So if you um, are going um, eastbound, um, you can enter your neighborhood on Innisbrook Lane. Or if you don't want to enter there, you're going to have to U-turn at Elkin School Road.
So I don't see it unless I'm missing it. I don't see a D cell lane at Elkin School Road to make a U turn. So they would just be using that center lane to U turn. Yes. Okay. And that's something that we can look into to see if we can fit fit a D cell lane there. You're not gonna have any. I'm gonna put that on my notes. Fifty feet, you can get in there. So. This is Jason Sanders. Um, I live in Innisbrook. Um, this is more of just a suggestion rather than a question, but I would I'd really appreciate it. And I know many others on this call are probably living in this brick as well. If we can somehow reconsider that median um, when you're going eastbound on, on Bose, turning on Bellingham, I, I think that would that help us help us a, a lot of us out um, kind of get through some of this, some of these issues that we're having with this project. Okay. We'll, we'll definitely consider it. Um, it, it, uh, this is just a, a schematic. Um, once our Graham associates gets, gets into the, into the, uh, the traffic counting and, um, more into a thorough design, we'll, we'll, we'll be looking at all that. Is there a set time on the hours they're going to be working? Um, we usually let contractors work from. 7 to, to 7 p.m. and they're allowed to work on Saturdays. Are you talking about construction? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we usually let them work. Uh, we, we don't do because of residential adjacency, though, they will not be allowed to, to work in the at night. It's typically 7 to 6 on weekdays and then Saturdays. If they are going to work, they'll, they need to let us know by Thursday at noon. Uh, and it starts at nine at nine in the morning. Cannot start work before nine in the morning on Saturdays. And it, it is very rare that they work on Saturdays or Sundays. Never Sundays. Does anyone else have any any questions? I'm Alex, gonna put back my information. Alex, this is Mark, Graham Associates. I just wanted to add a couple points to the questions that were asked. Um, one of them is we are considering a signal at Bob Hanger Street. It all depends on uh, traffic counts, but. We've already discussed that with the traffic engineer that that's probably a possible location for for a traffic signal um, because of the because that road goes so far to the south. Uh, it does carry a lot of cars. Uh, we've also looked at Joe and I have looked at uh, Elkin School, the possible uh, small left turn there to provide access for a turn lane. Not shown on the schematic, but but if you don't turn around there, you would be blocking uh, the lane of traffic to do that. And then I think the other uh, point I wanted to make was it, it involved the sidewalks and the trail system. Basically, we have a a full trail system from uh, Boat Club Road all the way to Bowman's Bowman Roberts. So we have 10 foot trails on both sides of the road all the way to Bowman Roberts. So at that point, we're maintaining a 10 foot trail on the north side all the way through the project. So it goes all the way to the end of the project on Elkin School and then and then from from Bowman Roberts to Elkin School on the south side is where we reduce the trail to actually a sidewalk in areas to help minimize impacts on uh, existing homes and, and parking and so on there. Uh, and we are trying to, the tree line that you see along the north side of the subdivisions, we are trying to maintain those trees as part of the trail system so that there's a canopy cover of trees that, 
that are that would uh, possibly shade that and help out with the trail system there. So. Now, this is Joe. The, the question there's one on about the trail different from a sidewalk. It's just mainly the width. Uh, the trails are 10 foot sidewalks or less. And the trails are wider just to allow bicycles to be on on the trail instead of on the roadway. That's correct. And then, uh, yep. I guess the other uh, the other thing uh, regarding the uh, the construction and maintaining you know two lanes of traffic. Uh, typically, on on a project like this, we'll try to maintain two lanes on one side, so we'll utilize the existing roadway. I know it's pretty close to the center of the right of way right now, but whatever side the that we can utilize more of the existing road. We may have to widen the existing road a little bit during construction to keep two lanes on it. But we would widen one side of the road, build a full two lanes, and then move traffic from the from the old two lane road to the new two lane road, and then build the other two lanes of this road. And then finally, as a third phase, we would build the medians and the center turn lanes. That would be typically of how we would construct that. So, so there's one more question in the chat. It says, uh, will any bollards be installed to keep cars from driving into the brick wall on the north side of Bowes Road? I think the big difference from the existing conditions to the proposed conditions is that we're going to have a curved roadway i.e. You know, there's going to be a curb, and curbs are usually one of the functions of the curb is to deter tri um, cars when they veer off the road to going into fences or properties. Um, typically on a thoroughfare like this, there are no bollards installed. It's the curb that serves the purpose of the bollard. Well, there are a couple other questions as well. Um, one of them is, will the grade be the same or will it be higher or lower? And it, that's in reference to the sidewalk. I think so. Yeah, the, the sidewalk is going to be. Higher than the road, if that's the question. It's, it's going to look just like your typical thoroughfare where the sidewalk is about 6 inches or 8 inches above the surface of the road. And th this is Mark again on that subject too. The the um, the existing road is built up in the air, so the new road will actually be cut down more. It it'll probably create uh, small retaining walls around the, the sidewalk areas, so that'll actually uh, you know with the road being lower and the sidewalk walls being there, it'll be more of a deterrent too for people being able to run into your fence, so. The last, the last thing I see in chat rolls, um, Jason says that uh, when school's back in sessions, those U-turns are gonna be virtually impossible in the mornings and afternoons as school's letting in or, or going in or letting out. And he agrees with comments that it's gonna cause more accidents. Yes, and, and I, I want to say something that we didn't say out, you know, at the onset of the meeting is, is this road is being very challenging to design because we, we we're juggling two things. Uh, we don't want to take right away, you know, vast amounts of right away from the existing properties on the south because that would be number one, cost prohibitive and number two, uh, damaging to all those properties. Um, so, so we're trying to limit the width of the road to avoid to minimize the, the right of way take. Uh, number two is we're at the very preliminary stages and we'll be looking at traffic counts and, you know, school traffic and so on and so forth. And so none of this has been set in stone yet, but there will have to be compromises. Um, 
prime example is, is Bellingham Road versus Bob Hanger Street. We have to have a median opening on that road that has the most traffic. We can't give it to the smaller road, especially when there's another entrance. And I'm not saying that's how it's going to end up being, but we have to have compromises because of the limitations on space on this road. Um, the other thing that I want to say is that our new lane standards uh, go from 12 feet to 11 feet. So it's going to be a much narrower lane and that studies show that that forces people to slow down and those all of our roads are going to be are being designed instead of 12 foot lane they're going to be 11 foot lanes so that's going to slow down people um, There's a question of what the road has saggy spots. Will the new one have saggy spots? Not really sure what we mean by saggy spots. I mean, any, it's going to be a brand new road, so it's going to be a smooth surface. Uh, will it have low points? Um, I'm not sure, Alex, that we have. I'm not sure what the profile looks like. Yeah, there'll be know. low points throughout the and there will be inlets to catch um, drainage at those low points. Mm -hmm. Can we get a copy of the presentation? Yes, we, uh, we will post the presentation in the project site. Oh. People who live in that neighborhood are SOL. I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with the term. Um, this is Mark again. I was going to mention on the uh, the last comment too is that the road uh, from uh, Sam Cantry Road to Elkin School Road is actually going to be out of the floodplain, so it'll be it'll be raised up in the air farther than it is now. So all of the new construction will actually be out of the hundred year floodplain. I know the current floodplain goes over uh, Elkin School Road right there through the intersection with the tributary. Not sure if we covered this question, Alex. Is there room to fit a roundabout at Bob Hanger? Um, I don't believe so, but Mark, you can tell me. Is there a remote possibility that we could fit a small roundabout there? I don't believe so. We would be damaging those prop that property immediately to the north. I would say it's about four houses. Yeah, it wasn't too bad today. But, no, okay. We did not want to do that. There's just not room there. Yeah, it's it's very tight. Again, we're trying to narrow down the road as much as we can to limit the yeah. impacts to the properties to the south. It is a little bit of a challenging project. Yeah, the get, like, system, by the way. Get I'm sorry. I think we didn't address this one. Will what will happen to those who have well water? This project does not change anybody from whatever system they're in. If you have well water, you will continue to have your water. If you have domestic water served by the City of Fort Worth Network, you can have that. So are those all the questions we have?
Well, just one one more popped up, Alex. Okay. The median at the front of Bellingham will generate excessive traffic from those who want to make left turns. Yes, again, you know, we have to make a decision whether to provide a median break at Bellingham or Bob Hanger, and that'll be based on uh, traffic counts. And there's a question whether we can have a meeting in person at some point. Jeff, are we allowed to have meetings in person? Yeah, well, we should be able to do that um, at some point in the near future. Um, if not the next meeting, then maybe the third meeting. At least, at least pre-construction. I know we're going to have a couple more meetings since, uh, given the size of this project. And for all of those that didn't get, you know, the chance to ask a question, or a question pops up, you know, after we close the meeting. Um, you have you'll have Alex's uh, contact information, and feel free to give your give her a contact. Well, with that, um, my I just put my information up back up on the screen. Just you know, take a picture of it, and uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to call me or email me. And I want to thank you all for for joining us this evening to discuss this project and um, have a good evening. Thank you. And one more thing for those that are calling users and can't see the screen. Her phone number is 817-392-8883. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, staff. Thank you, Alex. Good job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Be safe. Thank you. Good night.